My name is Carrie Ripsom, and I am the Alcohol Enforcement Officer for Fort Collins Police. My name is Jim Lenderts. I'm the Marijuana Enforcement Officer for Fort Collins Police. How long have you been doing this? Since about 2015. How okay. about you? 2019. I've been with Fort Collins for 20 years. I've been with Fort Collins for 24 years. Some of my description of my role as alcohol enforcement is I investigate fake IDs. I do compliance checks for all the businesses that sell alcohol, as well as teach them alcohol classes to make sure that they're in compliance. I also go and do inspections at those establishments to help keep them in compliance with the state. And then some other things that I do is I take referrals from patrol if they happen to take a call at an alcohol establishment to make sure that they, if they are in violation, that we get that fixed. And I also do backgrounds and a variety of other things to help people get licenses for new and upcoming businesses. Hey, as the marijuana enforcement officer, I have a couple roles. The first thing is to manage the licensed businesses in our community. We have 11 marijuana stores and about another dozen cultivation and other licensed marijuana businesses. So I have an oversight role. I do compliance checks and background checks in those locations. I also have an unlicensed marijuana program, which means we investigate black market cultivations who are selling to kids in our community or illegally exporting marijuana to other states. Carrie, how many licenses do you have? I was about to say, he mentioned he has 11. I have 385 liquor licenses currently. So I have a lot more work. So think about the differences in our job. Carrie has more, but her model's been around for a long time. Marijuana is new and sometimes it changes every week. Between us, we get the job done. So we currently use an online application on our phone. And what it does is it runs through all 50 DMVs and it will identify if the ID that we provide is valid, real, expired, or fake. As far as demonstration, um, first off and mo most importantly, we teach our businesses to look at the ID, verify that the person in front of them is actually the person on the ID, um, verify the security features that we've taught them um, to look for, and then go and use the application to verify um, the outcome. So I will scan a real ID first. Um, so on the app, it provides a scan area and you take the back of the ID, scan it, and for a real ID, it's gonna show that it is green, meaning valid, provides their name information and their age. And then if you scan a, an ID that is fake, same way, you just take the scanner and it comes up as red alert, meaning that person is not in the DMV system under New York State as being anyone valid. So it's very likely that the DL number is incorrect or obviously the person is not of age. So we provide um, fake ID recognition classes to all the alcohol um, businesses as well as the marijuana businesses and they have an opportunity to come in and be trained by Officer Leonard's and I and what they do is they get the updated information that we receive um, through training and then we allow them to actually physically touch and feel the IDs and determine if they are real or not. A compliance check is simply a test. It's where we take an underage operative working for the police department to either an alcohol or a marijuana license, and we send them in to purchase the age-restricted product, marijuana or liquor. If the business sells to the minor, the minor comes out, returns the product to us immediately, and then we go in and contact the employee and the business owner and navigate our way through the consequences. Once the business confiscates a fake ID, um, they use the form that we provide them to fill out. They make sure the date and time is on there as far as the time of the crime. They attach the fake ID on the paper and provide any information that would be helpful to us for our investigation. Um, the form is pre-labeled, pre-stamped, and then it gets sent to law enforcement. So once law enforcement receives it, Officer Leonard and myself, um, take each paper and start investigating it to make contact with the individuals. 
If we do make contact with the ind individual, we then issue a summons um, for them providing and possessing a fake ID. If they receive a ticket, they will have to appear in court. At that point, they then go over the requirements of the court. The fake ID user, if contacted by police, um, will be issued a summons. If they are a CSU student um, and not contacted by the police, they will still have to take a mandatory fake ID impact class and have consequences with CSU as well. When a business sells to a minor, there's a consequence for the employee and for the business. The employee that sold to the minor will receive a criminal summons and be required to go to court. The business owner will receive a licensing violation and have to appear in civil court and navigate the consequences for that. One thing that's interesting to note in the marijuana industry, the common practice for an employee who sells to a minor is to be terminated. So we want people to understand it's a much bigger deal than just getting a ticket. That employee might lose their livelihood, their job. Fort Collins Police takes fake ID laws very seriously for a variety of reasons. First of all, we want to protect the student, the young person, and the business. It's a much better option to not possess a fake ID, not get contacted for it to begin with. Second of all, we are one of the first states to legalize marijuana and certainly the country is watching us. So we want to be responsible and we want that system to work well within the law. Lastly, there's an identity theft component, both for the young person with a fake ID, by definition, you have impersonated another to gain a service. Many places, that's a felony. We also want that young person to understand they can become the victim of identity theft. You gave your personal information and a transaction device like a credit card or your Venmo to somebody on a website far, far away. So what happens if they then take all that information, create a new identity, and abuse your credit? Imagine someone running around Europe for spring break on your credit. We really want students to understand that could have an impact to them long after they leave CSU. I believe the Fort Collins Police Services and the Student Resolution Center um, relationship is good. I believe we work well together to make sure that we have the best information provided to those that do get caught with a fake ID. I keep CSU updated with all the businesses that actually um, do confiscate and collect the fake ID and misused IDs and provide them the paperwork if they happen to be CSU students and let them know as far as who is getting the tickets and who may have gotten a fake ID taken, but a ticket was not um, assessed. The biggest part of this on both sides, both CSU as well as the Fort Collins Police Services is education. Um, like my partner said, that this can be considered a felony offense. We don't want to go that route. We wanna give them an opportunity to take the fake ID community impact class to learn how it is not a victimless crime and that it can affect other individuals as well as the businesses. And we also, have to say that there is a consequence because it is breaking the law, so we want to make sure that they do understand and not reoffend. I'm Jim. And I'm Carrie. So thanks for your time today. Hopefully you've learned a few things. And as a CSU alumni, I want you to be able to have as much fun as I did during college. So make good decisions. Be safe. And go Rams. <laughs>